Welcome. In this session, we're going to calculate weighted average cost of capital, and we use weighted average cost of capital to work capital budgeting problems to evaluate projects. And the formula we have up here for weighted average cost of capital, you can see WACC equals um, this long thing, and we're going to we'll explain each component here. We have E is total equity, D is the total debt. R sub E is the return on equity, and you can see that in the formula over here. And we have R sub D is the required return on debt, and you can see that in a few places here. And then last, uh, the last two are um, L, which is the percentage of debt, and T, which is the tax, per tax rate percentage. So if you fill all those in, that's, that's our calculation. And we have the components laid out down here. And these, these correspond with what's in the formula up here. So what we need to do is um, look at an actual example of an annual report and fill in um, some critical information in the little income statement and balance sheet down below here. So the company we're going to look at is Dactronics. Okay, so the first thing we need is our income statement so let's go to our income statement and pick up our gross or our sales revenue which is 441.7 if we round um, to millions it's 441.7 you can see it says in thousands up here plus you have another three digits before the 441 so it's 441.7 million and we're going to enter that up here in our spreadsheet, 441.7. And we do the same thing for the cost of sales. We have 330.2. And so we're going to enter that in the next cell. Okay, and then if we subtract one from the other, we'll get our gross profit. So we're going to take our 441.7 minus our 330.2 and that gives us our gross profit of 111.5 and if we check ourselves out here that's what it says here on our income statement okay and the next item we're going to need is our operating expenses which we have right here we have 91.9 million again remember we have the three zeros up here to add on so it's 91.9 million and we put that in our spreadsheet for operating expenses actually let's round it to 92 okay so if we uh, subtract out our operating expenses from our gross profit that should give us our operating income so let's do that we have gross profit minus operating expenses operating income is 19.5 and that coincides with what we show here on the income statement 19.5 okay the next thing we're going to need is our non-operating income and you can total these up this 1.9 million this 0.2 million and this this is a minus and the positive 0.9 million here um, what we should get is um, 2.6 million so we'll enter 2.6 million on our spreadsheet and if we take and add our operating income and our non-operating income that gives us our net income before tax or NIBT okay so let's check that out 22.1 million our next item is our income tax expense which is rounded to 7.9 we'll put that down here 7.9 okay so if we subtract our tax expense from our net income before tax we should get the same net income so we we're going to put in our equal sign net income before tax and subtract out our tax expense of 
we get 14.2 let's see if that agrees and it does okay so we've got our income start statement done now we have to go back to our balance sheet and the first item that it asks for in our balance sheet is current assets so let's pick up our current assets here's our total current assets of 237.8 million again it's in thousands up here so that makes us two 237.8 million and we're going to put that in here okay the next one is our non-current assets okay so um, we don't have a total but it's the total of all these things or you could take the difference between uh, this 327 847 and the 237 822 and if you do that you should get 90 Point oh million. So our total current assets will be the sum of these two. So let's do that. Doing our auto sum feature up here. And it gives us 327.8. And if we look at our balance sheet, um, that should agree. I'm in the wrong column. It's, it's right here at 327.8. Okay, so we have 327.8. And we're going to do the same thing with current liabilities. We have 109.6. Um, and we'll go to our um, spreadsheet and put in that 109.6. And then we have to do the same thing. We have to figure out our non-current liabilities by either adding these or subtracting um, the 109.6 from the 15.1 here and if we do that we should get we should get 50, it is 15.1 this is a subtotal so we have 15.1 we don't we don't need to do that so we're just going to put in our 15.1 and we can do an auto sum to get our total liabilities and we have 124.7 now we need to go pick out our common stock which is shown down below here okay so in order to get our common stock we need everything here except for retained earnings so we could take 203.1 minus 149.3 and that should give us um, 53.8 and we're going to put that over here in our spreadsheet and we, we got to go back and get our our uh, retained earnings from down here 149.3 and that'll give us our total equity if we add the common and the retained earnings up 203.1 let's see how that compares with um, our income state our balance sheet 203.1 is the correct total equity Okay, and then if we add our total assets, our total debt, which is 124.7, okay, plus our total equity of 203.1, that gives us 327.8, and you can see uh, both sides of the balance sheet balance out just like they do over here. Um, 327, 847, 327, 847, which is consistent with what we just calculated. Okay, so now using the information that we just pulled out of our financial statements, we can we can calculate our percentages here. The first one is our return on debt, and our return comes from our net income after tax. So if we just put in an equal sign and and the 14.2 we've got that from down here and our denominator is going to be our total debt so we'll put in an equal sign and our total debt is 124.7 okay and then our return is going to be the same so we can put an equal sign grab our net income after tax put that in up here and then in this one we want our total equity 
which is down here. So we've got to come up here, put an equal sign in, get our total equity, hit enter, and you can see it's putting in the percentage return over here in the last column as we do this, because it's set up to do that. Okay, the next one we need our tax expense, which is down here. So we have equal 7.9. We'll put up here. And the denominator is our net income before tax. So if we put in an equal sign and our NIBT from down here, and that gives us our tax percentage at 35.7, and it pops it down here. And then um, our debt, we're going to get that again from uh, down here, which is the 124.7. And you can see it's the same thing that we used up here. So that's our denominator. And our total debt and equity, we can pick up from right down here, which is 327.8. And it gives us a percentage of debt. Now we want to do a percentage of equity, so our numerator is going to be our equity. We put in our equal sign. Our total equity is 203.1. And our total debt and equity is what we used in the prior formula, which is right down here. And it gives you our percentage of debt, a percentage of equity. And by the way, if you add these two things up, they should equal 100% because it's just a percentage of the total percentage of debt and percentage of equity okay notice that it filled in these these boxes up here with with each of these percentages that we just calculated and r sub d is our recorded return on debt which we used in our formula up here return on debt r sub e is our return on equity which we used in here um, in our formula. T is our uh, percentage of taxes, which we used over here. And L is our percentage of debt, which we used um, right here, which is L. Okay, so we've got all the information. And if you look at the cell in here, the formula was already in the cell. And it's this formula. It's just repeating what's in this formula in the, in the cell addresses here. And so our weighted average cost of capital for Dactronics is 7.12%. And that's going to make sense because it should be something between the return on debt and return on equity. And it's based on the proportion of debt to equity and equity to debt and equity. So what we, we did is we, we weighted our returns for debt and equity by our percentages of debt and equity in our formula, and it came out to 7.12%. So that's it. And you can try this on any uh, annual report, and just clear out the cells and start on your um, financial statements down on the bottom, and you can get your weighted average cost of capital. So that's a simple way for you to do it, and we'll see you in the next session.